secrecy. Now get ready before your mommies come home, because the cyber war is already in progress. Good Lord. Welcome to Monday, everybody. Welcome to the Hacker News. What a fucked up day. That's why we do this on Mondays, because Mondays are all fucked up. I staggered through the door 30 minutes ago, covered in drywall mud. Don't worry, I'm rinsed off now and ready to go. First up, shout out to everybody over at HacksRadio.com. And Mr. E, congratulations on your brand new high top rubber sheep herding boots. Congratulations on that purchase. And DJ Unity, I hear, uh, a few days back, 50 hours at the helm, face plant. Nice job, Unity. Anyway, let's get into it. A uh, bunch of stuff to tell you about, and thankfully enough, one of our sources, CyberWarNews.info, is back online. No explanation of why the last few weeks they've been unavailable. But since they're back, we're going to start out with the stuff they got for you this week. All kinds of stuff going on. Uh... Let's see. So I'll run through the headlines and we'll back up and read it. Anonymous hacktivists launch Op Vaticano. Data leaked and sites defaced. Outstanding. Fox News Taiwan still hacked and defaced five months after the fact. That's wonderful. Time Warner Cable support services hacked and defaced by Null Crew. Great. Tunisian uh, cyber army spree of attacks on financial sites. And 80 sites hacked by Sniper 399. Now let's backtrack here. And we'll start with the... Uh, Tunisian story up first, work our way back. This was as of the 3rd of March, and I don't think this was covered by the Hacker News. So anyway, last month a hacker using the handle uh, at TN underscore Cyber Army, who goes by the team or group name of Tine Tunisian Cyber Army, has uh, been on a small spree of attacks on financial-based websites. The attacks range from uh, Bank in America T to two MasterCard websites, exposing having excess uh, es exploits in them, which are still alive weeks later. First, there were six small data breaches on some bank-based websites, which have been posted and announced. Uh, all kinds of stuff. Tweets available, so you can go on over to cyberwarnews.info if you want to read all the tweets that were put out about that and get all the links to the information. Now, backtrack. Where are we here? Uh, uh, they got a bunch of stuff out this week. Anonymous has been raising hell all over the planet which is outstanding. So, since we're talking about that, let's find out what they did to uh, get Op Vaticano. That's the newest thing, and I can only imagine what that is. Well, why don't we have a little listen, shall we? Greetings world, we are anonymous, we want to present the Operation Vatican. During the history of the human beings, there always existed religious beliefs. This is the case of Catholicism. Just as anonymous were forged in the fight against the Church of the Scientology. Today we come together to show the world that the Catholic Church is a well of oligarchs that have nothing related to the Catholic faith. Every day there are more cases of sexual scandals to which is added the huge and dark heritage of Holy Mother Church. What disappointment! In a faith that preaches the fraternal love and the distribution of goods between all the men. We want to clarify that here we won't attack the Catholic faith, but if to the decrepit and corrupt leaders who govern betraying their own principles that they preach and the faithful parishioners. For these reasons and more, Anonymous begin the Operation Vatican. 
will hunt down the representatives of the faith that not lead by example, who take advantage of the privileged economic situation of the church and who mistreated and abuse of children. Brothers Anonymous keep informed through our channels for the next actions that we will carry out. Francisco the first do not look for us. We will meet you. We are anonymous. We are legion. We do not forgive. We do not forget. You should have expected us. Well, absolutely. Uh, we should have known. Okay, this big scandal in the Vatican, and now uh, Anonymous is on the scene. As far as I'm concerned, that's outstanding. If you rape little boys and cover it up, you should be tormented in hell for the rest of your life. So let the torment begin, as far as I'm concerned, for those that are responsible. That's my opinion. I welcome yours. Now, Avist, uh, Germany hacked, 20,000 credentials leaked, uh, good lord, all kinds of stuff going on here. Uh, Time Warner, let's check them out. No, we can't get to it from here. Well, there we go, Kevin, making a mess of things already. I told you, Mondays are horrifying, and today was exceptionally horrifying with work, two other uh, oddball appointments, and, okay, nobody's whining, so that's enough. Let me get tuned in here, dialed in, so I can find my links. And, okay, let's get back to that. I want to know about the uh, Time Warner Cable. Let's find out what's happened with them. Time Warner Cable service hacked and defaced by Null Crew. Time Warner Cable has had its main website for its cable service hacked and left defaced with embarrassing administration passwords. This was posted on the 6th of March. Uh, let's see here. The attack has been carried out by members of Null Crew who have announced it on Twitter and posted a screen capture to Freeze page. So if you want to go check that out, you can scoot on over to cyberwarnews.info and check it out. The main target was timewarnercable.com online support service administration area, which is running on port 8888 for web access. Null Crew members Orbit and Doc gained access via an exploit found in the system ASP, which allowed them to further access uh, to be able to escalate user permissions, and as a result, they found out the administration had an account with the password set as change me, which is just shocking to say the least. Change me. That might have been a good idea. Anyway, the attack has also exposed uh, what is said to be one of the system's SSL key passwords. The website was also defaced with a dump of information on and partial configuration files from the server at the time of publishing the website defacement was still active via port 8888, which is the administration access. In recent weeks, we've seen more and more high-profile targets come under attack by hackers who have left them shamed for a lack of security on the systems they use. And, you know, folks, you might be horrified. The mainstream media wants you to be afraid of all this hacking and whacking going on. But the truth of the matter is, is that uh, these guys are actually keeping you safe and finding these flaws uh, in many, many cases. So... Uh, don't let, the, as with anything else, don't let the propaganda get you, okay? Because that'll just kill you. Uh, yeah, well, now let's hit up the lamestream media here. Fox News Taiwan uh, hacked and defaced uh, after five months. This was posted on the 15th of March. Oh, good Lord, good for them. Assault the media, I endorse that. A hacker was named, uh, known by the handle over X has hacked and left the official... Uh, Fox News website defaced. Fox News website is the official Taiwan domain, foxnews.com.tw, and the defacement is in the form of a subfolder index, so the main website is not affected, but at time of publishing, the subfolder defacement was still live. Uh, let's see here, what else do they got for us? The defacing has no real message to it and was posted by OverX to Pastebin. It's also not the first time we've seen Fox News hacked and defaced. Even more interesting is the face that this defacement was originally archived back in November of 2012 and appears not uh, to not have changed for over five months. The domain is an official Fox News one and is registered to them uh, to a Taipei address, which raises questions as to why this defacement has stayed around so long. The site has had two other archived attacks dating back to 2009, and you can get links to those 
uh, defacements as well at cyberwarnews.info. So, like I'm always trying to tell you folks, nothing is secure. It doesn't matter. Uh, it, it's all, it's all done. Uh, let's see here. What else do we have from these guys? There's just so much. Every week, every week. 14,000 student credentials leaked from KTU Career Center in Lithuania. So, that, you know, students getting beat up now. Let's see. An anonymous supporting hacker using the handle uh, STZ and uh, Bar has hacked a Lithuania-based university, and as a result, over 14,000 student login credentials have been posted. So you can't even live anymore. Nothing is secure. I'm telling you, nothing nothing under the sun. The attack has happened sometime in the past few days and it was announced via the hacker's Facebook page but the leaked data was uploaded to a file sharing site as a text file. The leaked data contains well over 14,000 student names, emails, and encrypted passwords that belong to KTU Career Center. On the KTU Career Center homepage it states that there is only around 3,500 active students at the time of publishing so many of the leaked account credentials are most likely old and outdated. Well, still, there, there's still people. Uh, anyway, hacker uh, STZ has been posting a few other breaches on Facebook over the past few weeks, many of which have no real announced target. Just hacking for the lulls. Just whack it, take it, shoot it out there, splatter it all over the Internet, and leave everybody feeling very, very insecure. Now, here's a, uh, where did it go? I just saw it, and now it's gone. Good Lord. Uh, look like the lulzac.com website was hacked. Let me see if I can find that. The headline flashed by me, and now it is gone. Absolutely no idea why. Uh, here's some more great uh, headlines. Uh, Op Big Brother, string of cyber attacks for that. National Association of Federal Agents defaced. 90 Portuguese sites hacked by Anon Ghost. Good Lord. Australian web host uh, Uber Global possible breach. 30 sites left defaced. 80 sites, uh, as we said earlier, uh, by Sniper399. 80 sites, one guy. Let's find out. What's the details? I mean, this is just incredible. Nothing is secure. Absolutely nothing. And, and we haven't even gotten to your, to your iPhones and your, your your gadgets and your iPads and your Androids and oh God, you love them and, and you've, you you're done. You're just you're sitting there waiting to get picked off. You are. You, you're like a baited fucking doe during hunting season. You lured right in, and as soon as somebody wants all your shit, you got an iPhone, you got an Android, it's theirs, it's gone. Anyway. Let's get back to this. A uh, hacker using the handle Sniper399 is posted to uh, Pastebin that contains a list of 80 sites that they have defaced. The paste was posted 10 a.m. EST. This is dated, folks. Uh, this is at the end of February, February 27th, um, but I don't think it was covered in the other news, so we'll go back and tell you about it now. The defacement contains only a short message stating that the hacker is criminal, and that the site has been hacked and defaced, as well as some embedded music, which is a playlist of female dubstep mixes. <laughs> At the time of publishing, all the sites still appear to be defaced. Most of the sites uh, appeared to be small sites that contain nothing of real interest, so it's any wonder why people would put so much effort into attacking so many small-scale targets, unless it's all the name of skill building. Well, maybe you're just bored, you know? That's... Half the time, it's you. You just bored, and you you want to beat the shit out of things for for, for no, absolutely no reason at all, and that's fine, because uh, somebody will, uh, you know, be a little better off for it. I'm sure when they find out all the insecurities. Okay, uh, let's see here. I think there's a few more things for March from. Cyber War News. I want to make sure I got it all to you. I may have already covered it. 24 Pakistan government sites exposed for common passwords. The Middle East is getting hacked and whacked. It's incredible. Avast uh, Germany hacked and 20,000 credentials leaked with payment information. That's wonderful. Out fucking standing. Uh, yeah, and here it is. Lulzac.com. Subdomain hacked or was it? Well, I don't know. You tell me. This is uh, 
going back to the 2nd of March. See what they find, uh, tell us about this. Today, uh, they were alerted to a hack by a group of old school hackers from the late 90s who have left a subdomain of the well known hacker collective Lulzak Hacked. The attack appears to be a DNS attack as well as a defacement on another site which is currently sharing the same IP uh, that the defaced subdomain is currently being hosted on. The main Lulzak website, with or without the www, shows the long existing notice that has been taken over by authorities. The attack has been done by prime suspects who is, who is a Zone H, uh, who is on Zone H, have not made a post to the site since 2005, but that does not mean they have been totally quiet over that period. The defacement has a message to Lulzak and Anonymous and makes mention of Sabu, stating that they remember an old conversation from back in 2004 where he couldn't hack. Ah, anyway, what drama. You can't avoid it. Jesus, it's like a bunch of school kids. The other website which shares the same IP address, portal.lulzac.com, currently uh, does something. I don't know what the hell they wrote here. Good Lord. Anyway, so lulzac.com hacked. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe they're just playing kids' games. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Okay. Enough about that. Uh, we've got some uh, stuff coming up now from thehackernews.com. Get you a couple more headlights. Uh, headlines. Yeah, headlights. I just had to replace my headlight. Pissed me off. Anyway, this is uh, encouraging. The elderly are taking part in the hacking. That's right, 61-year-old hacker. Uh, unfortunately, he's been found guilty in a corporate hacking case by the FBI. Uh, it's a shame, beating up on the old people. 61-year-old uh, Texas man Michael Musacino, sorry if I butchered that, Michael, found guilty of conspiring to hack into his former employee's computer network uh, by the FBI. According to the evidence submitted at trial from 2002 to 2004, Michael uh, was the president of XL Transportation Services, a third-party logistics or intermodal transportation company that facilitated links between shippers and common carriers in the manufacturing retail and consumer industries between 2004 and 2006. Musiaccio, uh, along with his fellow XL employees, Joseph Roy Brown and John Michael Kelly hacked into Excel's computer system for the purpose of conducting corporate espionage. Well, that's outstanding. The, yeah, nothing is secure. You you don't know, and you don't know who's going to do it. It could be your 60-year-old grandfather, or it could be your six-year-old son or daughter. Good Lord, nothing is secure. Ah, uh, okay. It's about that time we're going to take a short break, folks. And as always, we like to promote uh, new unsigned artists uh, during Hacker News and the other show, Voice of Humanity. So if you are new music, send me a track, uh, a little bit of a bio so I know what I'm talking about, and we're going to get it on for you. For today, I want to give a big shout-out and much love to Vosto, uh, who does the instrumentals behind Zach and What Army. This is The God Fractal. It's a matter of importance to me That you be lucid and aware of what you're able to be Since I was able to see The lack of limits, I've been infinite And this is indiscriminate isn't narcissistic Arson isn't always meant to be destructive It's an art form This is my attempt to start the fire that makes you art more And logic less Cause logic since the dollar has been off of it I'm offering a sentence that could bring you back to sanity Empathic but emphatically I plan to see you mastering the art of your existence So that everyone can benefit Then on and on and fractally it blossoms into everything And mindfully we intervene I.e. create reality I used to hate this word but now I know its definition And I've learned to trust my family I see all seven billion So I deem it time to DMT you all with my opinion, and I pray to my creators that just one of you will listen, cause the light and divine truth was always inside you, I'm here to remind you that you are not what confines you, you traveled through time to arrive at this line, and now you are 
are in a vessel designed to invent and define truth. Illusion divides you, but you are the limitless find through, through which everything vibes through. And I'm here to remind you that you are the light and divine truth. It's always inside you. I'm here to remind you that you are not what confines you. You travel through time to arrive at this line, and now you are, are in a vessel designed to invent and define truth. Illusion divides you, but you are the limitless vibe through which everything vibes through and I'm here to remind you that you are I am the Illuminati of my own reality I am not afraid of those who benefit from apathy I am not a slave to any entity or anything my mission as a cell is reconnecting us with everything inevitably everything is bound to evolve cause that's the nature of the fractal that we're also involved with revolving around a nucleus that nuclearly powers us but I've comprised a theory that suggests we really power it power is the act of understanding what you're standing on This is not the planet I was born from Though the Mastodon is part of me I'm partially a particle lost Time and space But I'll remember when they're blasting me off That I am everything Free from the pendulum I may never be But I control my darkness Just enough to make a friend of it Addendumless my Bible is Remembering the ultimate Then every channeled verse Is holy text because we come from it And every son and daughter Is my bleeding hearted counterpart So I will find the others And remind them that we have heart You're part of God Whenever you remember And I'm sure now Endeavoring forever on the quest of showing more how the light and divine truth was always inside you I'm here to remind you that you are not what confines you You travel through time to arrive at this line And now you are in a vessel designed to invent and define truth Illusion divides you, but you are the limitless vibe through Which everything vibes through I need only remind you that you are the light and divine truth It's always inside you I'm here to remind you that you are not what confines you, you you travel through time to arrive at this line And now you are in a vessel designed to Invent and define truth Illusion divides you But you are the limitless find through Which everything vibes through And I'm here to remind you that you are God I'm here to remind you that you are The light and divine truth It's always inside you And I'm here to remind you that you are Not what confines you You travel through time to arrive at this line And now you are in a vessel designed to Invent and define truth I need only remind you that you are God I'm here to remind you that you are God. I'm only here to remind you that you are a magical turtle. Magical. A magical turtle or God, whichever you choose. Good Lord. What a cool tune, though. Much love. Many thanks to Vosto for allowing us to use that track. And if you want to get your track heard on the Hacker News or the Voice of Humanity during an intermission, just shoot me an email, kevin at masterofmanythings.com. A few announcements before we get back into the headlines. Uh, Voice, of, Voice of Humanity live shows that are coming up this coming Saturday, 4 to 6 p.m. That's March 23rd. Uh, this story ties back all the way to the early 70s, hijacking of 58 November where a Army uh, or Air Force pilot, rather, and a bungled hijacking by the FBI left the pilot murdered. Uh, his wife fought for years, and everything was swept under the rug. Now the son has picked up that effort and has a documentary coming out. So we're going to have that story with us uh, this coming Saturday. The following Saturday, March 30th, is a show that is really dear to me. Uh, I've worked with many of these activists uh, several times in the past with live shows. Uh, survivors of institutional abuse, Jody Helm Hobbs uh, from SIA organization will be, be with me, as well as many other activists that are fighting to stop teen torture, to uh, heal the survivors, and many of the activists of the Op Liberation Campaign, which is uh, working simultaneously, anonymously, alongside all of these other activists and organizations and uh, it's going to be an honor to find out about the upcoming SIA convention during the show. Again, that's March 30th. The time is 4 to 6 p.m. East Coast time. So, what other news is coming up? Oh, yes, outstanding. Uh, we don't have an exact date, but a few of the hosts here at UCY.TV are going to put our heads together 
and we're going to put on a marathon of talk radio live for 24 hours. Uh, right now, as some of you know, some of it is rebroadcast and stuff you need to know about, but we're going to pitch in and do a fundraiser for Jules, who has been busting her ass um, beyond anything that I could even explain to you in a short amount of time to get this network up, keep it going, uh, satisfy everybody, and uh, really just make it real easy for the hosts to get on air and talk about what they want to talk about. And so much love to you, uh, Jules, and Paul, who gave up a minute of his birthday cake, actually, so I could get on air uh, last Saturday. So much love to you guys. And anyway, if you have an interest in taking part in that show, if you can fill an hour or two, have a topic that you can cover, shoot me an email, let me know, and as things progress, um, I will get with you to make a formal schedule. But that should be coming up uh, with more information sometime in the next month. So I hope everybody can pitch in a little bit of time, and by that time we will have something that you never see on the site, but uh, by that time we will have a way that people can donate so that we can take the station to the next level. And this is key because uh, there's a great team of bloggers, writers, hosts, and uh, camera ability, and the next step is uh, video, live, and et cetera, et cetera. So we have goals, and we're trying to... Uh, do it. Well, Jules is trying to do it uh, all on her own, so she deserves and needs some help. Anyway, let's get back into the headlines here for a little bit. Um, surprisingly enough, now normally there are more headlines in the course of a week than I can get to in one hour. This week isn't the case, uh, and sometimes that happens. They sometimes withhold information, <laughs> as we all know. So once I get through these headlines here at the Hacker News, I'm going to give you some other uh, anonymous operations that are going on on the social networks uh, that I think you need to know about and possibly take part in. Okay, we just heard about Grandpa hacking uh, his old business uh, for the purpose of espionage. They have all these great words for us that make us sound so vile as they're stealing from us and uh, doing the same damn thing that Grandpa's doing. I mean, we all know the governments of the world are... are the better portion of the hackers that are out there probably um so anyway let's move along what's up next kuwait in the headlines uh kuwaiti group of hackers have defaced the lebanese parliament oh well that's wonderful team kuwaiti hackers team of hackers yesterday to face the website lebanese parliament website that's lp.gov lb on uh, the Facebook page, they posted the photo, photo of Sheikh Ahmad al Asir of Bilal Ben Rabah Mosque on the front page. hope I didn't butcher that, but if I did, well, what the hell. Uh, anyway, I tried. And displayed a message opposing Hezbollah and the regime of Syrian President Bashar Assad. Uh, Secretary General of the Parliament warned that the hackers, that they will be uh, judicially pursued by the relevant authorities, uh, judicially pursued, well, and if that doesn't work, you'll probably be shot down, but anyway, last year a group of hackers identifying itself as Raise Your Voice, or RYV, took down a number of websites of the Lebanese government, and in an interview with LBCI, uh, Sheikh Asin denied any links to the hacking, denounced it, and urged hackers to remove his picture. Well... That's probably not going to work real well. Uh, okay, here we go. Uh, always something about your phones, Android again. WPS scan for Android WordPress vulnerability. Uh, till now, WP scan was available for desktops, but recently Android hacker Alesso Dalla Piazza, uh, sorry if I butchered that as well, developed and released the Android version of WP scan, a WordPress vulnerability scanner shown in a screenshot captured by over security so you can get that at thehackernews.com and check that out it is written in java which attempts to find known security weaknesses within wordpress installations although we know that desktop version of wp scan is really uh, work slow with many advanced options of scanning so this handy pocket version for mobile devices will be helpful for those who can't sit in front of the computers for waiting results and includes user you, uh, enumeration, Tim Thumbs, file detection, themes detection, version detection, and many other features. The author also released a full version source code on GitHub. Install or download the app from Google Android Market. So, 
well, that's not uh, any headline that's going to make you feel insecure, but uh, if you've been here for any of the shows, you know that uh, there's normally two or three things related to your smartphones and tablets that every week, every week, uh, this week is an exception. But if you've missed any of that and you're here for the first time and you think this is all hogwash and that you're perfectly safe and that you don't really do anything on your iPhone anyway and you know other than log into your Gmail and then poof you're done but anyhow go to master of many things dot com uh, click the live talk radio tab and that's where you will find all the archives um, via YouTube uh, playlist for the hacker news and the Saturday show the voice of humanity okay some more headlines uh, actually no that is it um, other than China and the US accusing each other over cyber attacks and that's an ongoing story and there's no sense to waste your time with it uh, but we do have some uh, information here that was put out earlier on Facebook and I want to pull that up for you uh, op Syria are still underway still going on uh, Palestinian hunger strike for Gaza uh, in Israel, the madness, um, and there was some big stuff here. Let me scroll down. Sorry, I should have had it ready for you. Oh, yeah, Op Israel, uh, uniclass.co.il hacked and defaced, uh, mass defacement. Pretty little picture on the site, so you can go check that out. If you search on Facebook, your and on client, you will find that information. And what else was there? Uh, routers suspends their editor for conspiring with anonymous. Uh, this is outstanding. We can take you to this and let you listen into this uh, clip. This is about five minutes here. Uh, well, the deputy from social RT. media editor of Reuters is facing some serious problems this week. The Justice Department says 26-year-old Matthew Keys conspired with members of the hacktivist group Anonymous to break down in, uh, to break into computers of his former employer. Keyes was the web producer of the local Fox 40 station in Sacramento when he was fired back in 2010. The indictment filed against Keyes says that he provided hackers with the login and password information to Fox 40's parent company, the Tribune's master network. One of the headlines on the LA Times website was changed as a result. So essentially this is an act of digital vandalism. Keyes now faces three criminal counts and that could land him in prison for 10 years with more than $750,000 in fines. RT web producer Andrew Blake has been following this case and he joins me now with more. Hey. Andrew, there's a lot of confusion surrounding this case. Can you break it down for us a little bit more? Yeah, so, you know, this case has actually been going, this investigation has been going on for a really long time. We only really found out about everything yesterday. So back up a little bit, I mean, you seem to cover all the bases pretty well, but uh, Keyes was fired from his job at this uh, small time Fox affiliate in Sacramento back in late 2010. And after he left there, uh, supposedly two months later, he logged on to a chat room that was frequented by members of Anonymous. And at some point, whether he was in that chat room once or twice or whatever, he, he handed out the login uh, credentials, a uh, username and password, so that so someone could just log on to a uh, company computer and take a look around. So w what ended up happening, at least what we've been told is happening, and nothing, nothing more than this, was that someone changed a story on the LA Times website for around 30 minutes. And so under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act, Keyes is now looking at uh, upwards of a few decades and three quarters of a million dollars in fines because um, someone who wasn't supposed to access a, uh, a authorized computer system did. And so his, his attorneys are saying that he's ple uh, pleading not, not guilty to the charges. And um, it's, it's gonna be a really, really interesting case be because here's a person who who has affiliated themselves with this group Anonymous, and it, he's not some elite computer hacker or anything. It's just some dorky journalist who seemed like he was trying to uh, fit in, trying to cause some trouble, maybe trying to seek revenge on his former employers, maybe just trying to make some cool internet friends. Well, yeah. that's what I was going to ask you, Andrew. I mean, we've all had those Jerry Maguire kind of moments or thoughts where we've thought about uh, doing something really crazy against our bosses to extract revenge for something that they've done for making our lives miserable. Was this a case of just extracting revenge, or is there, is there something more to it? Well, it, it, it depends on, on if Anonymous did any more with this information. I mean. They already say that they gave access, he gave access to the group, therefore opened up the doors, and that's enough to charge him with everything that he's already been indicted for. 
the, you know, that, that's right there. But, you know, did Anonymous do anything else? Could they have done anything else? And then also, why, why exactly what was, on, it was Anonymous disinterested? Uh, one really interesting aspect here is uh, right when Keyes was hired by Reuters in early 2012, his first story for them actually was a profile of the group Anonymous. And he, he started talking about how he went into the group and he befriended them and he thought that Sabu, the alleged ringleader, actually confided in him and trusted him. And he wrote a profile on him right after it was revealed that the Sabu fellow was actually working for the FBI. So from what we know, this Sabu, uh, Sabu uh, Hector Xavier Monsieur, the ringleader of the Anonymous offshoot LulzSec, um, he was arrested in 2011, started cooperating with the feds that summer, and in March 2012, his identity was finally revealed when Jeremy Hammond, Barrett Brown, and a bunch of other uh, hacktivists had their homes raided. Some of them were arrested. And that's when this whole anonymous thing really started falling apart, or you know, depending on which way you look at it. Anyways, the, the interesting thing here, though, is he was cooperating with this fellow named Sabu before Sabu was cooperating with the FBI. At least that's what we're being told. Was the FBI fishing for information? Do we think that this fellow was actually you know, set up by the FBI? There's a lot of really interesting questions. It fits into many pieces of the puzzle here. Not only did Reuters hire someone who maybe they shouldn't have, but uh, also w was the government trying to, to set up anonymous or set up someone, try to bring down a journalist? Like, there's a lot of like, really weird questions here, a lot of bizarre little twists and turns. We only have a short time left, but I have to ask you, how do, how do we know for sure? Is there a way for the prosecution to prove that anonymous didn't hack into it, that they logged into it with the information that this person gave? Is there any, is there any indication of how it actually happened or, or to say definitively that the information that he gave linked them to the website. Well, when, uh, when Keyes profiled Anonymous in 2012, when he started with Reuters, he actually included screenshots of the, the chat room conversations that he was having at the time, not ones where he allegedly handed out usernames and passwords, uh, or a username and a password, but just, you know, hi, what's up, what's happening, and was just, you know, trying to have some fun with these guys. So if he did hand over the information, uh, that's 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 said and done right right there. But well, what it's going to come down to is is what else happened in, inside these computers networks? Did did Anonymous actually try to uh, infiltrate, try to compromise any other data? It was just one single security breach, which, in my opinion, isn't worth three quarters of a million dollars worth of fines. But regardless, uh, it's it's going to be something I think as it as it develops, we're going to hear more and more about this case, and it's going to get more and more confusing. So. Hopefully we'll have to put those pieces together. All very confusing. We uh, can trust that you'll be sticking with the developments of this. RT web producer, Andrew Blake. All right. All kinds of more shit still going on because of the uh, Sabu snitch there. Um, crazy, crazy world. You know, you can't, you can't trust anybody really. And some more uh, stuff we heard last week, uh, the anonymous, you know, losing uh, or exposing credit card and financial information for a lot of big names and they're continuing on. This was uh, in RT. Hackers published CIA Director Brennan's financial records. CIA Director John Brennan is the latest member of the Obama administration to have their personal financial records leaked on the web. A credit report alleged to belong to Brennan, one of the newest additions to the U.S. President Barack Obama's official cabinet, was published Friday afternoon on the website exposed.su. The site made headlines earlier in the week when it published social security numbers, home addresses, and credit card reports for a number of influential Americans from both Washington and Hollywood. The dossier on Brennan is the latest addition to the site and puts him in the category of a handful of other Obama administration officials, including Vice President Joe Biden, FBI, FBI Director Robert Mueller, Attorney General Eric Holder, and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Additionally, Exposed.su had released sensitive information this week allegedly belonging to First Lady Michelle Obama, actors like Mel Gibson and Tom Cruise, and the chief of the Los Angeles Police Department. The FBI Secret Service and the LAPD all confirmed that they were investigating the leaks when the website was first discovered earlier in the week. Since then, uh, though, he administers, it, the administrators of Exposed have continued to publish information on celebrities and politicians all the while eluding the authorities. Uh, the page posted on Friday with information on Mr. Brunner includes what is alleged to be the CIA director's home address, phone number, social security number, and a credit card report as prepared by the company TransUnion. Earlier in the week, a spokesman for the TransUnion told Forbes that they immediately launched an investigation within moments of hearing about the initial leaks. RT called one telephone number alleged to belong to Mr. Brunner, including in the report 
He was told he was unavailable for comment. RT was told that Mr. Brennan would likely not speak to the media about a leaked credit report, but was first asked if the phone call was a matter related to the government. The credit uh, report was created Friday, March 15th, and includes information on the director's past, student loans, American Express cards, auto leases, among other details. Uh, yeah, again, nothing is secure. Nothing. Now, if all these high-rolling bastards in Washington, you, you know they go out of their way to protect their asses. They're dropping like flies. They're dropping like flies. H how soon till you're, you're, you're attacked? Huh? Everything's online. You're, you're, you're done. You're all done. It, that's it. <laughs> you are all done. Okay. Some anonymous operations that are coming up that are definitely worth supporting, especially this one, Op July 4th. You can go to opjuly4th.com. That is O-P-J-U-L-Y-4-T-H.com. And you can order constitutions and hand them out and organize. And if you can't afford to buy constitutions, there is a link that you can print your own. Inform yourself. Uh, right now there are, let's see, 83 cities that are in the beginning stages of organizing uh, a mass handing out of the Constitution. And I think this is outstanding. I'm going to go through the cities for you so you can research that and um, get interactive. And, and it's outstanding to see my home state of New Hampshire is in that list in Concord, New Hampshire. So I'll do my best to attend that and maybe get everybody some live footage from the event. That would be outstanding. Anyway, San Diego, San Francisco, San Jose, Los Angeles, Temecula, Fresno, Hollister, Redding, Riverdale, uh, I mean Riverside, rather, Sacramento, and Sonora. All those, of course, in California. Uh, let's see, Omaha, Nebraska, Lincoln, Nebraska, Salem, Oregon, Portland, Oregon, Eugene, Oregon. Oregon's ripping it up. Dallas, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, Washington, D.C. What a place to hand out constitutions, huh? Huh, White House lawn? Yeah, they, they do need to read the fucking thing because evidently they've lost their copy. Oh, anyway, before I get all upset, Seattle, Washington, Virginia Beach, Virginia, Danville, Virginia, Weirton, West Virginia, Marietta, Ohio, Ashland, Ohio, Columbus, Ohio, Cleveland, Ohio, Mansfield, Ohio, Belleville, Michigan, uh, Jeffersonville, Vermont, the hillbillies are getting down, Chicago, Illinois, Albany, New York, New York City, New York, Elmira, New York, Jackson, New Jersey, Wildwood, New Jersey, Jersey City, New Jersey, Newcastle, Delaware, Portland, Maine, Thomasville, Alabama, Huntsville, Alabama, Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, there was also one in Colonnade, Pretoria, South Africa, San Juan, Puerto Rico, Cookville, Tennessee, Madisonville, Kentucky, Hodgsonville, Kentucky, Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, McAllister, Oklahoma, Haleyville, Oklahoma, Hearsthorn, Oklahoma, Atlanta, Georgia, Oxford, Mississippi, Indian Indianapolis, Indiana, Boise, Idaho, Tampa Bay, Florida, Jacksonville, Florida, Pensacola, Florida, Kansas City, Missouri, St. Louis, Missouri, Springfield, Missouri, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Anderson, South Carolina, Charlotte, North Carolina, Denver, Colorado, Grand Junction, Colorado, Fort, Col Fort Collins, Colorado, Manhattan, Kansas, Las Vegas, Nevada, Ocean City, Maryland, Hagerstown, Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland, Boston, Massachusetts, Lansing, Michigan, Benzonia, Michigan, Holland, Michigan, Salem, Michigan, Almont, Michigan, Salt Lake City, City Utah, see some stumbling, Des Moines, Iowa, La Crosse, Wisconsin, Racine, Wisconsin. Wow, 83 cities, mass circulation of constitutions. Again, you can go to op. July4th.com, that's O-P-J-U-L-Y, the number 4th.com, and you can order constitutions, get active, find out uh, what's going on in your city, and um, if you don't see your city listed, and it's too far to travel, just to the next city, go ahead and get going, order some constitutions. Anyway, okay, some other stuff that's going along, so Op July 4th is cranking along. Um, let's see what else the Anonymous are up to, because we've got uh, a few minutes to kill here. And going into the Anonymous search, first thing up, uh, 
invaluable discussion on challenges of securing physical, virtual, and cloud architectures. I don't know why the fuck that is in the anonymous. Oh, it's one of the sleazy promoted tweets. Outstanding. Get that the hell out of there. Okay. Okay. Uh, and on Ops Legion seems to think that uh, we punish and humiliate tyrants. That's an outstanding. I, I love that. We are anonymous. Israel expect us. Op Israel. Let's see what's going on with that. We've got a date of uh, the 7th of April and a twit pick. So let's find out uh, what's going on here. Well, that's what it is. We punish and humiliate tyrants. Op Israel. So, Israel, uh, the message is pretty clear. Expect us. That's uh, no other details at this moment, so we'll keep you updated. Uh, let's see what else is going on. Uh, President of Philippine official site hacked by Anonymous. We can go check that out. That's a new one that hasn't uh, been covered in the other ones yet. This is from uh, Voices of the Gray Hat. So we don't have white and black anymore. Well, we've got gray hats running around. Good Lord. Like I said, nothing is secure. After remaining silent for a certain period, the infamous hacker collective group Anonymous strikes again. I don't know what you mean sitting around silent. If you are on the social networks, you'll know there is not a moment's rest. There is no, not a moment's rest. Uh, as you might know, that normally the group targets high-profile websites like government organizations, federal authorities, defense ministries, and other giant organizations. That's not quite... A true statement. Those are the ones that the mainstream media end up reporting on. But uh, let you be a town municipality that's uh, stealing food out of the hands of kids and arresting the people that are trying to feed them. You, you don't have to be a large entity uh, to come under attack. You just have to be vile, unjust, and a tyrant. Um, no other qualifications needed. Anyway, back to the post. Uh, let's see. Hacker group targeted the official website of the president of the Philippines. During the cyber attack, the hacker group had breached the security system and managed to get access inside uh, the website. And as expected, they defaced the index page. In the news section of the website, the hacker group calling themselves Anonymous Philippines, affiliated to one of the world's most dangerous and largest hacker community, communities going by the name Anonymous. Now, see, this, this media propaganda bullshit, and I want to point this out because this was put out by an anonymous Twitter profile, and I see right through the fucking mainstream media wordplay. Everything in here makes you want to be negative about anonymous. Dangerous? Wait a minute, wait a minute. Governments of the world are dropping fucking bombs on people and chemicals and things that really hurt. And Anonymous is using technical skills to make change, and nobody bleeds from that. Some may end up losing their asses and their assets that they stole anyway, but that is not dangerous to me. I'm not intimidated by them in, in any way, and nor should you be, uh, because as they will tell you, you are them uh, at any moment that you choose to be. So I'm going to stop with this post because... Uh, I can see right through the bullshit, and um, you got to watch out for this. The online world, folks, nothing is secure. Everything is a psychological fucking hell. It, it is. It, it's a psychological hell. Nothing is real, or it might be, but you're not sure, and if it is, you're going to... No. Okay? Watch your asses. That's all i got to say. Watch your asses, shut your mouth, and watch and learn. Um, okay. CIA press office on Twitter... Attention DHS, uh, Gov, and FBI, WFO. The attack on Justice Gov was done by undergods, not anonymous. In other words, happy hunting. Okay, so now we got all this uh, he said, she said. It wasn't anonymous, it was undergods. Well, um, maybe they're parallel. I don't know. Justice Gov was down. Uh, this was posted just 22 hours ago, so justice.gov was down. Let's go see if it's down now. That seems to be back up. So these things uh, usually only go down for a short amount of time just to make a post. Uh, and this, um, breaking news, and this I saw the other day, and uh, it's from before it's news, and there's no other confirmation, so I'm going to leave it up to you as to whether this is, this is a, 
a bunch of horse duty or not. Um, but according to them, Hillary Clinton was uh, placed under house arrest for $660 trillion worth of derivatives. Um, and so obviously, no news in the lamestream, mainstream media. Only one person, uh, Tom Hennigan, has any information about this. And I don't know Tom Hennigan, so I can't say. But this headline is going out there. When I did some searching the other day, I couldn't find anything other than before it's news. And if it's before it's news, it may not have happened. Ah, uh, that's uh, good. Now, what else is going on? We got a few more. Uh, oh, Bill Gates. Well, this is wonderful to see. His credit report has been put online. Let's go check this out. Uh, it, Bill Gates, what a vile individual. Vile and disgusting. Oh, good Lord. Uh, anyway, let's see what we can do here. Everything is moving so slow. Well, it's Monday. Nothing wants to work. Bill Gates is the latest in a number of high-profile uh, people who have had their personal information shared or online hackers. The FBI is trying to find who is behind the website that has posted the information. Gates' personal data, including a Social Security number, was posted yesterday with the same day that Gates talked to the Washington Post about cybersecurity. Outstanding. Hackers were able to access Gates' credit reports by answering a few simple security questions, the answer to which all can easily be found online. The same website also posted Michelle Obama's credit report. We heard about that. Uh, they're hitting everybody. Again, nothing is secure, but I'm, gl I'm glad to see that somebody is uh, throwing Bill Gates around a little bit. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, he is disgusting, vile. Uh, he needs to be in prison along with the rest of them. And... Uh, that's that. Now, for a moment, we are going to check out uh, what's going on. You'll hear me talk a lot about the op liberation movement. I hope anybody that is on Twitter and on the social networks will get behind this uh, movement. Uh, if you don't know, there's a whole industry abusing our what are labeled to be troubled teens. And um, right now, one of the biggest headlines is... Uh, SEMA, Stop SEMA, you'll find that under the Op Liberation tag on Twitter. And uh, that's a horrifying story. Military-style abuse tactics uh, by an unregulated uh, ex-military. you got to look into it. Uh, but anyway, um, let me see if I can pull that up for you because uh, it, it's just vile and disgusting what's being done to our teens. Some of them have even died in these institutions and uh, really looking forward to the show on the 30th when a bunch of uh, people from the movement will join me here at UCY TV uh, because we, these, these kids are being abused and they are the next potential leaders. They are our workforce and because a teenager gets mouthy and he doesn't click with his parents for several years those, those parents feeling overwhelmed can be manipulated by marketing and convinced that their troubled teen needs to go away. When their troubled teen is actually a very normal teen, um, and maybe, you know, some family something needs to change, but they certainly don't need to be sent away. And when they are, the parents pay high costs, but the children pay even greater costs, some of them with their own life. So please get behind that movement, Op Liberation on Twitter. Uh, just so worthy and a bunch of great, great people to interact with uh, as you get to know them. Uh, trying to find the SEMA information because that is coming up and going on and needs uh, a lot more attention. And for some reason, I can't find it. What an asshole. Uh, normally, you will be able to find that under the Op Liberation tag, and for whatever reason, I'm not seeing it because so much is going on. Um, even a hackathon for autism is going on, and that sounds like a good deal. So let's check that out uh, so you can know about that. This was posted uh, March 22nd. Uh, how can that be? It says it was, but I'm not finding it. Anyway, uh, Microsoft Bing Fund is creating a series of hackathons around autism. Uh, where they will invite technologists, designers, subject matter experts, and people living with autism, both families and individuals, to participate and help produce prototypes which uh, they will use to continue to build 
at subsequent hackathons. So, sounds like a good cause. I, I always get concerned when Microsoft is behind anything because their answer is inject them with some type of uh, vaccine and, and uh, I'm just not happy with all that kind of stuff. So, uh, anyway, babbling now. Yes, burning up. Just the last uh, few minutes here before we go for the day, folks. Um, next week, same time, 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. And again, if you missed any of the shows, you can catch all of the uh, Hacker News and Voice of Humanity shows from my website, masterofmanythings.com. Just look for the uh, Live Talk Radio tab right up on the header, easy to find. And tweet about us. Share us on your social networks. It's very important. Uh, the station's new, growing, and got a lot of great content, a lot of hosts that are just working their tushes off. Um, and I can't say enough about the tenacity of Jules keeping this all together and I know what it's like to deal with many hosts because honestly folks sometimes we can be bitches we really can we, we want everything handed to us and then we don't show up on time and so that's uh, no we've got a bunch of great hosts I don't mean to say that but it is it's like dealing with a bunch of little kids so much love to you Jules uh, for doing all that you do and uh, keeping the network going so, again, I want to reiterate, be with me this Saturday. Uh, this, this show is going to be shocking, um, the information that you're going to get from it. And uh, by participating in the show and getting behind the upcoming documentary and sharing that information, you're going to help a son end a, a whole generation of agony uh, knowing that his father was basically murdered by the FBI and the mother spent her life um, fighting to no avail, uh, the amount of information that is being put out there to revisit this story that goes all the way back to 1970, uh, it's incredible the amount of work that uh, has been put into this. So I hope you'll join me this coming Saturday, 4 to 6 p.m. East Coast time. And then again, the following Saturday, very important, the... Uh, survivors of institutional abuse. I really look forward to the show. I'm expecting a full house as far as host. Jody Helm Hobbs will be the main speaker to start off with, and she's going to tell us about uh, the upcoming SIA convention. And I know personally from people that went to the convention, I believe it was last year, it's just such a healing moment when th these people are survivors of the institutional abuse, and they've banded together out on the West Coast, and they're, they're really helping people uh, go forward and uh, bring awareness. So I hope you all can join us and we're going to try to have some of the victims, survivors, uh, call in as well during the show and some other professionals from the field to let you guys uh, know some of the psychological aspects of what's being done to our kids, uh, what can be done to stop it, what to look out for. It'll be a great show, especially if you're a parent and you, you have young teens and you're coming into that, because it's exhausting. I know, I'm doing it myself now. Um, but God forbid anyone ever suggest I send a child away uh, with what I know, um, just not my style anyway, but with what I know, it's like sending a sheep to the slaughter. So that's the show, folks. Uh, many, many thanks for joining us today. Much love to all the UCY dogs. <laughs> And we are out of here.